We submit ourselves to wage slavery in order to commit our children to the unsavory in the vain hopes of them training through the competitive pre-primary, secondary, tertiary production line that tunnels straight into the factories of the forgotten far below the morbid mountains of misdirected mines, competing for golden tickets to burn out, churning and burning oils and animals, oceans and jungles to line other people's pockets. And that's if they're not broken down by the social education engine first. We measure our successes in days and nights overflowing with busy work and bureaucracies. We measure our failures in welfare checks with strings attached to draw and quarter them down into charities instead of the very communities that they were supposed to be uplifting. We passionately play job roulette in the hope of winning roles that won't only pay us to be miserable. We optimize our fad diets, ingest caffeine and pop pills, but still it takes every ounce of will we can muster just to zombie lurch through each day. Too anxious to perform properly while pretending that everything's okay. We offer ourselves up on the altars of our addictions to pharmaceuticals or exercise or sports or games, to television and social media channels that distract and rot our brains with sordid simulations of society, nonsense narratives obscuring futility. We'll give ourselves over to literally any kind of fantasy that might help us temporarily forget our existential pain reality. We chase down our nightmares with spirits to drown our spirits and bring on dreamless sleep and cottonmouth mornings. After whole lives chasing smoke through halls of mirrors, we're too tired and stressed to rest, to make memories that fuel us, to write our own stories that build us. Once upon a time, we didn't have all of these modern inconveniences. And our society in its denial has maintained the useful lie that Luddites were against technology. But in actual fact, their fight was for their right to continue living their lives on their own terms, setting their own hours, spending their borrowed time on their families, constructing their communities. The original Luddite rage was against the same perpetual energy-consuming industrial complex machine that's held its iron grip around our necks for so long that we only remember our freedoms in advertising materials, political propaganda, and other children's tales designed to hold back the looming revolution. We've all been generationally traumatized by lifetimes of trying to keep up with the runaway gunpowder German steel train on foot. We've no time to grab our stumbling neighbors by the hand without falling behind ourselves. Our breaths are short, our lungs are burning, and our muscles are on fire, but we keep on running. We've no time to consider that this train's tracks are not a viable, reliable route to surviving our relentless race to the future. To consider that there might be alternate modes of transport that we can use to get to dust B from dust A. Modes that let us ride with our soulmates and even sing along the way. We can walk, we can ride, we can slip, we can slide, just as long as we make sure to always remember the golden rule of never go it alone, because you don't have to do this alone. 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 Our internalized social functioning inversions have generated mass hallucination diversions and left us wired up to implode. We inadvertently drive ourselves and our kids to either shoot up or shoot out and then reload. Everything seems to be broken, but it's not just the compasses and our pointing fingers. You see, we blame the rich, we blame the glitch, we blame the cheat, we blame the snitch, we blame the poor, we blame the pure, we blame the sick. We blame the cure, we blame the company, the individual, we blame the economy and the aboriginal, we blame the foreigners, we blame their gods, we blame our own with their golden rods, but it doesn't matter who's at fault, because we're all full of faults, and the fixing's down to each and every one of us if we want to bring this grim storyline to a halt. The truth is, there isn't anybody who will save us but ourselves. There's no hero in a cape, or band of plucky dwarves and elves. We need to bridge the gaping chasms of our fractured collective consciousness, pull together if we're going to reach towards redemption, rebuild our self-confidence. We need to dig ourselves out of our self-imposed prisons where we serve without a crime, even if we can only afford to do so one single disposable plastic teaspoon at a time. Stop. Take a breath. Grab the first hand that you see. Help and be helped. 
There's more to life than just you or me. Don't be afraid. Try to remember why you're here. This epic adventure began so long ago. Where we're headed, still not clear. If you try to do it anyone else's way, it will be hard just to survive. So don't ever let anyone tell you there's only one right way to thrive.